Can gerbils live alone? Well, in general terms, the answer is no. Okay, that's it. That's the video. <laughs> I'm kidding. There is, of course, a bit more to it than that. And there's even some cases where it may be necessary to house a gerbil alone, which we'll talk about later. Now, although some pet stores may insist that gerbils are solitary creatures, this couldn't be further from the truth. In reality, gerbils are social animals that thrive in pairs. In the wild, gerbils live in family groups and spend most of their time interacting with other gerbils. They communicate through various vocalizations, body language, and grooming each other, which is essential for their emotional well-being. If gerbils are housed alone for a prolonged period of time, they miss out on this vital interaction and can develop depression-like symptoms such as increased anxiety, appetite and weight changes, less exploration, and sleep disturbances. And even commonly identified happy gerbils that don't display any of these symptoms could simply be hiding their true feelings. Pumba was one of these gerbils. She never displayed any symptoms of depression and outwardly seemed to be exactly the same as before Timon passed away. By most people's standards, Pumba would have been considered a gerbil that was happy alone. But it was only when we finally got our new friend that we realized how desperately lonely she was. She was clearly desperate for gerbil snuggles and companionship, even though on the surface she seemed okay by herself. So regardless of whether a gerbil displays obvious depression-like symptoms or not, I think aside from a few rare exceptions that we'll talk about later, generally gerbils shouldn't be housed alone. But if we can't house them alone, how many gerbils should we have in an enclosure? Well, while gerbils are technically social, they're much more selective with their friends than, say, mice or rats. While rats can live in large, interconnected, polygamous colonies, sometimes including more than 150 different individuals, gerbils have more of a monogamous, family-based system. The only natural group structure that forms among wild gerbils is the male-female pair. Then clans are formed when litters of pups are born, and some stay home to help with raising younger siblings. But even though larger groups do form, these are temporary and caused by suppressed fertility in the older pups. Eventually, these pups become fertile and fall out with their parents, which results in them moving out. The only stable and consistent part of the clan is the male-female pair. There's also anecdotal evidence from the gerbil community that pairs are less likely to declan than larger groups, with the risk increasing as more gerbils are housed together. So, although gerbils can't be housed alone, they also shouldn't be housed in large groups. Pairs are the most stable. If you're considering getting a gerbil, it's best to get two, so they can keep each other company. Although, they can still fall out occasionally, especially if there's a lack of resources. So make sure to include multiple hides with multiple entrances, multiples of toys they both really like, and scatter feed to stop anyone getting defensive over food. The only times I think it's reasonable to house a gerbil alone is if they've had multiple failed bondings and show signs of stress when living as neighbours with other gerbils, or if they're very old and weak or have an incurable illness. These old and poorly gerbils may struggle to deal with the stress of the bonding process, or they may become a target for the younger, healthier gerbil. So in these cases, it may be best to leave them solo, give them gerbil neighbours if they'll tolerate them, and give them loads more toys, enrichment, and social interaction from their humans. But if you've got a healthy single gerbil and are now wondering, what next? How do I give them the company they need? Well, gerbils can't just be put together straight away, as they're highly likely to fight. They need to be carefully introduced using something called the split cage method. And I've got a complete guide going over everything you need to know to get started. So click on that, and I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching.